I somehow just took away my fear I had in chemistry and biology. You have to join the easy and world. My name is Victoria Modia, a student in Italy. You, anywhere you are, you can join us. Join the easy world. Be a subscriber. Bye. The whispers in the morning. Welcome to Sir Majesty Easy World Science Channel. Nice to see a great fellow like you. Today I will be analyzing two salts all together and these salts are zinc triazocarbonate 4 and aluminium chloride. So uh, there will be a guide question, a likely question, and I might give you two or three guides. But remember to understand the science behind each analysis here. So I will be analyzing, I will show you the, the apparatus needed uh, all here and I will tell you normally we know how to record you have your test, your observation and your inference so the first of all you see the uh, guide, the question guide there on the screen the like the question we'll be using uh, the question is X and Y are inorganic salts carry out the following exercises on X and Y record your observation and the conclusion drawn from the results of each test identify any gas or gases evolved Put the whole of Y in a beaker and add about 10 ml or 10 cm cube of distilled water still to dissolve. Test the resulting solution with litmus and divide into 3 or 4 depending on how the examiner remember. This is to teach you the comprehensive way to do this analysis. If you are faced with this type of analysis in the exam, you read the instructions given to you on your question paper and follow the examiner's guide accurately. Then the first question says to the first portion to Z, in other words, they just say add drops of the first solution of Y on Z. Or you might also be told to add about half spatula of X into the solution of Y, into the first solution of Y. And remember here, Y is actually aluminum chloride and X is zinc carbonate. But you are not required to call all this name in case of examination you are just required to follow the steps and carry out the analysis well then the next question says to the second portion of the solution of y add some hydroxide in drops until in excess then to the third portion of a solution of y add aqueous ammonia in drops until in excess then to the fourth portion add dilute hcl so these are the, the, the first possible question they might ask us or we might use to be analyzing these two salts collectively that is aluminium chloride and zinc carbonate. Another possible question is this. You might also be told to, to mix the two and then dissolve in water, uh, uh, then followed by filter. So mixing X and Y, meaning mixing aluminium chloride and uh, uh, zinc carbonate will give a precipitate, of course, when you add water. And uh, in that aspect, there will also be uh, effervescence, of course. And when you are asked to filter and keep, this time around, there will be definitely the, uh, the, the dissolution of the zinc carbonate by the aluminium chloride. Though the aluminium chloride is a normal salt, but remember it is also called a Lewis acid. That is a Lewis acid. And because of salt hydrolysis, aluminium chloride hydrolyzes to form a strong uh, acidic solution. And therefore, when you add it to zinc carbonate, there will be effervescent, like the liberating colorless, colorless gas, which turns lime water milky. Today, you will see how. Carbon dioxide, turns lime water, milky. Everything in this practical should be demonstrated. Will be demonstrated for you to see. There is most of you will hear that it turns lime water, milky. You have never experienced where it turns it milky. So the easy word, uh, easy word science channel is here to give you this real thing. You see where it will turn it milky. Then I'm explaining what will happen if you are told to mix aluminium chloride and zinc carbonate, or if you are told to uh, mix the two, of course, and add water. Definitely there will be effervescence, colorless or colorless gas will evolve and that gas is CO2 because it will turn lime water milky. The chemistry behind this is that aluminum chloride and zinc carbonate are both normal salts. None of them is acidic salt, none is basic salt, they are all normal salts. But due to salt hydrolysis, aluminum chloride dissolves in water to form a, 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 an acidic solution which because of the fact that it is a, is a, is a salt of a strong acid which is HCl and a weak base which is actually aluminium hydroxide, we assume it that way. While zinc carbonate is insoluble, it is insoluble in water. So we are analyzing a mixture of soluble and insoluble salt. But here, we might not be likely asked to mix the two because mixing the two will give us a reaction. But if they tell you to mix the two and filter, mix X and Y and filter, what it means is that there will be effervescence on mixing it and colorless of the gas evolved. Then after filtering it, what should be going into the filtrate is now zinc chloride, 
whereby the, the, the residue remaining is likely going to be aluminium oxide, of course. So remember, I said earlier that aluminium chloride is a perfect Lewis acid because it is capable of accepting a pair of electrons to complete its shell as the aluminium there, which is bonded to three chlorine atoms, still have is still deficient in a pair of electrons and therefore it can accept electrons. So according to Lewis, aluminium chloride is nothing but an acid and that is why it also attacks the zinc carbonate to liberate carbon four oxide. So now that is the introduction. What we have here is that I have my over here is the, 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 the aluminium chloride. I have collected small sample of using for the analysis here. And over here is actually my zinc carbonates. Uh, zinc carbonates. Actually, on analysis, I discovered this is not pure zinc carbonates. So I have to make, make the produce another zinc carbonate here, and it's also inside this vessel, which I will use to bubble uh, the CO2 into lime water so that you see how it turns it maybe. Therefore, then you also we also need the reagents such as aqueous ammonia, sodium hydroxide, aqueous, and we need dilute HCO. Then uh, we also need a uh, lime water which is here so then we have the filter apparatus in case we have the filter we have the filter funnel just in case but the first likely question as you see on the screen doesn't require you to filter you only filter if you are told to mix the two and add water and then there will be filtrate and there will be residue colorless filtrate and the white residue where the filtrate is now going to be zinc chloride so now i'm going to tackle the first likely question or because it's aluminum chloride it, we might also need silver nitrate and aqueous ammonia just to confirm the presence of chloride uh, ion okay then you also require your litmus paper as i forgot i have uh, uh, the red and the blue litmus paper here so first of all the first question says dissolve all of uh, dissolve uh, all of uh, y in about 10 cm of water in a beaker here i have this beaker so they, they will give you why in a watch glass like this or in a specimen bottle so this is my aluminum chloride remember aluminum chloride when pure is white but when contaminated by iron at all it turns yellow so don't be surprised if you see your own a bit yellowish that means it is now contaminated by iron but the pure one should be very very uh, it's a white crystal so remember to buy from some majesty easy world i supply i sell all these things so this is about the I'm dissolving now in about 10 cm cube. Remember, in this case, about 10 cm cube is not forcing you to make it 10. So it's just for you to dissolve in what you can divide by 3 or divide into 3 rather, divide into 4 portions. So this is it, it has dissolved. Then when you stir where it is highly soluble, remember most of the chlorides are soluble except few of them such as silver chloride, other chlorides in chemistry are very much soluble except the silver chloride, the two chlorides, the power chloride so you are told to dissolve in water the, that's the aluminium chloride and uh, also test with uh, litmus so I'm going to test with litmus definitely I want to use blue because I already told you that aluminium chloride can also be called Lewis uh, acid. It's an acid according to Lewis. So, this is the solution of, uh, I guess, the solution of Y. So, I'm now putting blue litmus. So, you see, it turns blue litmus pepper red. And that's, we have concluded the first. Uh, step therefore i will record the first test says uh, y plus 10 cm cube distilled water plus stem plus litmus so what's my observation my observation is y dissolves to form a colorless solution or a clear solution dissolves to form a clear solution. The same solution we detected that the solution turned blue litmus red. What's my inference? You say that Y is soluble 
in water and also solution of Y is acidic. Solution of Y is acidic. Why is it acidic? I explained because of salt hydrolysis and other way around, it is also a perfect Lewis acid. Then the other step said divide into four portions. Over here I have the test tube. So to the first portion, I'll be using this as the source. I'm taking first portion. The first portion we are required to add a to add it dropwise on X, that is on zinc carbonate. Like I told you earlier, that this particular thing, as the, also shown by the color change in the litmus, is highly acidic. So if you drop this on zinc carbonate, there will be effervescence, colorless, odorless gas, which turns lime water milky with evolve. So in this analysis, you might be told to use HCl to do the same, or use the same aluminum chloride to do the same. So I'm adding the zinc carbonate into the first portion of the solution of uh, aluminum chloride so definitely there will be there is effervescence though it's not showing clearly there in the camera there is a uh, effervescence a kind of uh, colorless colorless gas coming out so in this case i will use this one here this is this carbonate and then uh, I'll use the lime water to demonstrate for you how to pounce it milky. Fill this test tube with lime water. I'm filling it with lime water. Then keep it. Then channel this delivery tube into it. See now that the lime water is very clear. Not, there is no milky. Come in there, then I want to introduce dilute ACL using this fringe into the reaction vessel. Okay. So over here is I don't know how to place this so that everything will be visible in the camera. So, dilute HC up. If I introduce it, see there are bubbles. That is bubble. The, H, the CO2 is being bubbled into the lime water. If you see gradually, it is turning milky. The lime water is turning milky. If I introduce more, it has already turned milky. See, let me introduce more of the HC power. Okay. So that's very much obvious. So it has turned the lime water milky, showing that the gas is CO2. So the gas being bubbled in is CO2, so the gas is still being produced. So as you bubble more, if I shake this, see more bubbles come. Okay. So that's the chemistry. So the gas which turns lime water milky is actually CO2. So this is just extra, you see it's possible. Not just to report that colorless or colorless gas evolve and the turn line with a milky, but now see that it is quite possible that a gas that is coming out with turn line with a milky, maybe I'll still rerun the experiment with a fresh line water. So I'm filling here again with lime water. Okay. So let me keep it and add in more of the reactants for bringing the lime water into the delivery tube. See? So, see? if 
has turned it milky immediately and it has been clear before but now it's milky so you have seen the signs so now we are done with the first step then the other one says so the first portion of the solution of uh, Y add sodium hydroxide in drops until excess so I want to do that one now I'm collecting the, uh, the, the kind of the second portion or third portion we'll be adding maybe I use a bigger test too we are told to add sodium hydroxide in drops and then in excess this is my sodium hydroxide use your dropper pick in drops there is white gelatinous precipitate in drops I guess my camera can show it well so then in excess I'll do, I don't need a dropper I'll just pour direct see so precipitate dissolves in excess of the sodium hydroxide so what do I do? I'll now go to the board. It should be in your answer scripts for you. But here I'll record on the board. Uh, I've done two things. I didn't record the first one is just first portion of solution of Y plus X. What happens is there will be what? Effervescence, colorless, odorless gas evolved. Gas turned lime water milky. So in your inference, you write CO2 gas from CO3 to minus. Remember, please, in this experiment, you can be you can substitute it by you might be told to add dilute ACL on X or on X, of course, and X is in carbonate, you still observe the same reaction. Colorless, odorless gas, which turns lime water milky with above, and the same gas will also turn blue litmus paper red because it's also an acidic gas. Okay? Then the other experiment I did, the third one was the first portion of the solution of aluminium chloride plus sodium hydroxide in drops and then in excess, which means here I will write second portion, not first portion actually. In your exam, it might be first portion. Just know that I'm adding aluminium chloride, uh, I'm adding sodium hydroxide into an aqueous solution of aluminium chloride. So, second portion of a solution of Y plus sodium hydroxide aqueous in drops plus excess what was our observation we observed white gelatinous precipitates you can use ppt in drops which dissolves to form a clear solution in excess of the reagent which dissolves to form a clear solution in the which dissolves to form a clear solution. This is solution in the the excess of the reagent, meaning in the excess of sodium hydroxide. So if this happens in chemistry, if you add sodium hydroxide in drops and followed by excess, if it gives you white precipitate which dissolves in excess, you suspect aluminium ion. You also suspect zinc 2 ion. In real sense, if the precipitate is gelatinous, there is no need of putting lead in real sense. But maybe, for example, because you might even add or lead present. But since it's gelatinous, meaning it is sticky to the walls of the test tube, it is sticky. When it is sticky, just like the gel you apply in your hair, you say it is gelatinous. But when it is chalky, just like you suspended the powder in water, you say it is powdery or chalky. So, in real sense, if it is gelatinous, we're supposed to say aluminium or zinc present. But for safer side, just say aluminium, zinc, or lead, likely or 
present. Okay. Then the next experiment, we were told to add aqueous ammonia to the next portion in drops and in excess, just like we did with sodium hydroxide. This time around, we'll be using aqueous ammonia. So I want to collect the next portion, probably the third portion, because the first we used it for for confirming the uh, reacting it with the carbonates. Okay. So I'm collecting the third portion. They said add sodium hydroxide, uh, sorry, aqueous ammonia in drops, then in excess. So this is my aqueous ammonia, here is my dropper. To add in drops. In drops, there is still, we have white gelatinous precipitate. Then in excess, let's see what happens. You have to be careful here. The guess I've not discarded tango that not this one was the result we obtained with sodium hydroxide in excess. So let's add this one in excess. That's adding aqueous ammonia in excess. Okay, so don't confuse this. If you are not careful, you say it dissolves. It persists. Please compare these two. This one dissolves, which means the sample we are analyzing is soluble in excess of sodium hydroxide, but insoluble in excess of aqueous ammonia. In that case, it means that among the three things we have suspected here, uh, we are going to eliminate one. What does it show here? With sodium hydroxide, it dissolves. Aluminium, lead, or zinc will do the same thing. Why? Because these metals are amphoteric metals, meaning aluminium, lead, and zinc are all amphoteric. Their hydroxides are amphoteric. They behave as a base, as an acid also. So when I added in drops with sodium hydroxide, I'm explaining the chemistry. What was formed was actually aluminium hydroxide. Then adding excess of sodium hydroxide, the sodium hydroxide will now react with aluminium hydroxide to form a complex source known as sodium tetrahydro aluminate which is actually a complex uh, salt. That's NaAl bracket OH bracket 4. That is the compound here, and that's why it dissolves. If it is lead, it will still form the complex sort of lead. If it is zinc, it will also form the complex sort of zinc. But here, I used aqueous ammonia in this case. So, aqueous ammonia is a ligand, in other words, it's also a Lewis uh, base, and uh, it forms a uh, complex ion with the transition metals. So checking one, two, three, aluminum, zinc, and lead is only zinc that is a transition metal and have the ability to dissolve in aqueous ammonia. Aluminum and lead is a non-transitional and will not dissolve. So in this case, if this happens, you come and report third portion. Remember in an exam, it must not be third portion. It can be any portion, but remember when you add aqueous ammonia to a sample of aluminum chloride, there will be, let's write, third portion of solution of Y plus aqueous ammonia in drops plus excess. We observed similar in drops, there was white gelatinous precipitate, precipitate in drops which remain insoluble or which persist in excess which remain insoluble in excess or which persist in excess persist in excess of what the reagent which is the aqueous air, ammonia and what should be our inference the kind of what conclusion are we drawing here in recess aluminium or lead should be present likely, but like I told you here, if it is gelatinous, no need of even adding them. But normal steps include them. Uh, so, aluminium or lead present in this case. So, we have I, we have eliminated zinc because zinc, if it were to be zinc, zinc would dissolve in aqueous ammonia, just like we saw in sodium hydroxide. So, zinc is the only thing that will form white precipitate that is gelatinous in drops of aqueous ammonia and dissolve in excess of it. But when it persists like this, you suspect aluminium or lead. It's not dissolving. So aluminium or lead, we move to the next question. The next one says... Hi, my name is Sharon. And I'm Jennifer. Guess, Guess what? what? There's a channel called Sir Majesty Easy World Science And you know the best part? Mm -hmm. It's mixer in soup. 
Wow. It makes science easy, simplified, and very, very fun. Guess what? Rocky science ain't rocky science anymore. It's now ABC. Like if you did science in your entire life. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing about Sir Majesty Easy World Science Channel is that he makes available laboratory equipment and reagents. That Guess the best part. If chemistry has been hard for you, he does tutorials. And another thing is when you order for these things, they are high quality and they are also cheap and affordable for anybody. If you want to order, just look at the number on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the little notification button down below. Don't forget to share, of course, obviously there's love in sharing. Thank, Thank you. you! See you there. <laughs> to the fourth question, either we are required, here is our test, still observation and our inference. Is here. So the next one you are required. I don't know if it's visible. I will come down here. You are required to add maybe the fourth portion of solution Y plus HCl plus dilute HCl. This one, this step will now tell us which among aluminium or lead is present. So, to explain what will happen, if I add dilute HCl and there is a white precipitate, I will say it is lead. But when I add dilute HCl and there is no visible reaction, I will now say aluminium ion confirmed. So, the chemistry is that any sample that gives us white precipitates with sodium hydroxide and dissolve in excess of sodium hydroxide, the same sample gave us white precipitates in drops with aqueous ammonia and remain insoluble in the excess of aqueous ammonia, the same sample showed no visible reaction with dilute HCl. It shows that that sample contains aluminium ion. So, we, with this last test we are going to do, I've uh, narrowed it down to tell us that the sample we are analyzing is actually aluminium. So, this is the sample. This is my kind of first portion. And you'll be told to add dilute HCl. The dilute HCl should be in the brown reagent bottle to prevent reaction from light, just like silver nitrate is also encouraged to be stored in a brown reagent bottle like this. Uh, and also, your HLO3 should be in the brown reagent bottle. Uh, your DIN can also be here. So, I'm adding the dilute HCl. You see, there is no visible reaction. So, if we are told to add dilute HCl to the solution of aluminium chloride, or the solution of whatever you call it, uh, depending on the alphabet. Our observation now is no visible reaction. There was no visible reaction. And following it tentatively, we will now write under inference aluminum ion confirmed. So we have confirmed aluminum ion. So in our inference. So we have settled the aluminum chloride. Coming to the zinc carbonate, I've done the part that is possible for the zinc carbonate. The part that is possible with the zinc carbonate is that you might be told to add dilute acid to the carbonate. Just like every other carbonate will give you a, a, a effervescence with a colorless, colorless gas, or actually, uh, yes, with the, which turns slime water milky, and that is carbon four oxide, as I've shown you. Then, the rare condition may be that you may be required to mix this zinc carbonate with aluminium chloride and dissolve in water if you are and then filter if you are told to do this if you after doing this there will be there will be a kind of the filtrate will not be zinc chloride so that what is remaining will be probably a kind of uh, uh, aluminium oxide uh, together with uh, other equation. I'll write the anticipated equation. But before then, you might also, just because it's chloride, we can detect the presence of chloride using these two pairs of reagents, silver nitrate and aqueous uh, ammonia, just for complete analysis. So, uh, you might be asked to add silver nitrate to any portion. This is the aluminium chloride. I'm adding silver nitrate. There is white powdery precipitates. This precipitates, if I add aqueous ammonia in excess, it will dissolve. I just want to use a bigger test tube where that will permit me add excess of the aqueous ammonia. Okay. So, so this is 
the white precipitate formed. If you add silver nitrate to any sample and it gives you white precipitate, normally you should follow it up by the addition of HNO3, of course. If there is no visible reaction, you also add now excess. See, on addition of excess excess ammonia, the white precipitate dissolves to form a clear solution. So, in the confirmation of chloride ion, one requires silver nitrate, nitric acid solution, that's dilute solution of it, and then you also need your aqueous ammonia. If you add a silver nitrate and there is formation of white precipitate, and if you add HNO3, there is no visible reaction, then when you follow it up by aqueous ammonia, the white precipitate will dissolve you right in your inference, chloride that you confirmed. So in your observation, you explain like I said, the observation will be if at all you are testing for chloride ion, because we are discussing aluminium chloride, all we have been dealing with is how to pinpoint aluminium ion. For chloride ion, you can use these pairs or this set of reagents. I said silver nitrate, HNO3, and then the the so-called uh, aqueous ammonia. The second likely question may be where you are told to mix the two, the zinc carbonate and the aluminium chloride that I told you. Though this is unlikely because of the fact that there might not be complete uh, reaction. So the anticipated reaction, if you are told to add zinc carbonate, the solid sample of zinc carbonate into a solution of aluminium chloride, what was the anticipated equation of the reaction should be aluminium chloride plus zinc trioxide carbonate 4. The equation I'm anticipating should be zinc chloride. I tested this, I discovered that if this happens in the residue, uh, in the future, zinc will now be detected. Then plus aluminium oxide plus CO2. What matters is that there will be effervescent. To balance the equation, there should be two here, and the two is here, we will automatically need to put three here. And when three is here, there should be three here. One three here, that should be three here. So checking this equation, we have aluminium is two, aluminium is two, zinc is three, zinc is also three, chloride ion, chlorine is six, two times three, two times three, here is three times two. So oxygen is three times three, nine. This is three plus six, which is nine. So in that case, if you are told to do this, you'll be required to filter. If you are actually asked to mix the two, this should be the feed rate. And the, if there is complete reaction, this should be what is remaining as the residue if there is complete reaction and this one will come out as a gas it's part of the effervescence so you should be very careful if you are told to do that your filtrate will just be analyzing zinc 2 ion either and if it is in 2 ion this is only when you are told to mix both x and y meaning aluminium chloride and zinc carbonate mixed together then stir and filter your filtrate should be zinc chloride and your residue is probably going to be aluminium oxide and you will only be analyzing the filtrate but I say this one is not a clear and specific way of analysis, so it's unlikely going to come. You take that first likely question I analyze very well. So that is it for this particular one. But if it appears, just know that the feed rate is now the zinc chloride. And uh, when you now use sodium hydroxide, you observe the same thing you observed. There will be white gelatinous precipitate which dissolves in excess of sodium hydroxide. You still write aminon lead or zinc present. Then, if you use aqueous ammonia, that's where the thing will change. If you use aqueous ammonia, there will now be formation of white gelatinous precipitate, which will dissolve in excess, unlike when we analyze the aluminium chloride pure. But if you are told to mix the two and filter to analyze the feed rate, there will be likely chance that the, the white gelatinous precipitate formed with aqueous ammonia will dissolve in excess of aqueous ammonia. And instead of saying aluminium or lead, you just say zinc 2 ion confirmed. But why is this not likely? Because there, was, there might still be interfering aluminium ion in the same filtrate that aluminium that couldn't react well but i'm just preparing this against all odds so remember to order for your chemicals your reagents like i met this in this lab i discovered that it is not zinc carbonate but the label is zinc carbonate the leverage of the fact that I don't know left and right. So on analysis, I discovered that this is actually calcium carbonate. So what I did now, I have to make zinc carbonate immediately by myself. And there are other ones. Because of that, it's already uh, must produce the pure zinc carbonate and also the aluminium chloride. They are available with other reagents, your apparatus in chemistry, in physics, and also in biology. You can visit my website at www.easywordscience.com dot com and place your order there or you can also place your order on the number you see there on the screen you place order through whatsapp or you place a call whatever your order will get you within two days after payment we deliver with assurance and safety and the products are buying from us we will guide you how to use them 
and the products are actually of high quality by former scientists who actually knows what he is selling, not just a marketer. I cannot do without you. In a special way, I have to thank you, my follower, for helping me get to 10,000 subscribers. Let's do more in a majestic way. I cannot do without you. Of course, much love from me to you. Bye for now. Hi, guys. My name is Tremaka Arizi. I am, I am a second year medical student. My name is Sushma Dupati and I'm a first year medical student. We're here today to ask you to please subscribe to Sir Majesty Easy World. It has cool experiments and it makes science it. fun. So, subscribe! Please. Make it cool. Make it cool.